In this section, we're going to talk about the overhand throwing progression. You will notice that a lot of the kids, as they're throwing now, have a lot of different arm angles and a lot of different release points. As a coach, what we're going to attempt to do is if you have kids on your team that are having a problem with that throwing motion, we're going to start with what we call whole part teaching, which means breaking down the entire motion from its end all the way back to its beginning in each step. And that way the kids will understand what the proper throwing motion is, rather than just demonstrating a motion in its entirety. You guys want to come on over and we'll get started. Come on, on over here. Okay, I saw a lot of a lot of varied release points there, a lot of different releases, a lot of different arms going back in different angles and so forth. And I asked a couple of you as I walked around, do you ever have any problem with your arm? A couple of you said yes, sometimes it gets a little bit tight in here or tender in here when I throw a lot some of you in the elbow. We're going to attempt to try to eliminate those things and the easiest way to do that is to break down our throwing motion into what we call whole part method. One step at a time starting with the last segment. What I'm going to have you do is get a line on one side and then your partner crossed from you on the other side and the first segment we're going to do is we're going to face each other like this with both feet square we're going to isolate the wrist so that you understand what the wrist flip does. I watched some of you release the ball with a stiff wrist. If you will snap your wrist, you will find out how much better that feels and how much more whip you will have on the ball if you will isolate the wrist. So we're not doing this. We're simply holding it here, and we're going to flip the ball back and forth to each other. That will show the ending. Then the next step in line is going to be able to let go of the wrist so that you get a little bit of movement in your arm. And bring the ball back here. Bend your elbow eye high. See where my eyes are with my elbow? Bring my elbow eye high with the ball back. Then we're going to flip the ball this way and follow through. Back and flip the ball this way. And then probably the most important segment when I'm watching what you're doing is most people are starting back here. And look where my hand is, straight up and down. Where this hand at this point, when my elbow is eye high, needs to be turned back. It's from here to here to here. And then when we add the next part to it is when we turn and close our front shoulder, we go down with our thumb, back up here to here, elbow is eye high to release and follow through out front. And the one thing I see that's most glaring in a lot of the girls that I coach is that they take their hand straight back with the thumb in this position to here and just flip. They never get turned here, which causes the arm here to get the whipping action in it to come right out here for the follow through. You need a full arc, just like your pitchers do. When we, chest, we check two points when we're pitching. One point is when we brush right by our ear here to have a full arc in our pitching motion. The next one is when we hit here in the front as we go by to release the ball. Those are the two checkpoints for the underhand motion. That means we get a full arc here when we pitch. This means we get a full arc here. See where my arm is extended back? It's not bent like this and cut off. It's extended back to a wall. It turns and flips here and then follow through. So what we're going to attempt to do today is break each one of those segments down because some of you are good in two of the segments and then one of the segments is the one you're having problem with. It'll create more arm strength and it'll take pressure off your arm. Look where my arm is here. Is it level with my shoulder? It's below my shoulder, isn't it? See how it goes down here? The elbow has to be either shoulder height or above when the arm comes through, and it'll take the strain off your shoulder and give you more arm strength. So let's line up in two lines real quick. Let's have the line here with the ball. Let's put the ball on right hand for you right-handers, ball on the left hand for you left-handers. Let's take our glove off right now and grab our wrist, come on up here about even with me, and grab our wrist and isolate it. Now there shouldn't be any movement with the arm, it's strictly flipping the ball with our wrist to get that feel, okay? Ready, flip, okay, ready, flip. All right, back and forth. Make sure there's no movement with the arm, you're isolating the arm out of this movement and using just wrist action alone, okay? Very good. 
Try not to let it move. Hold it real tight with that wrist so you're just flexing the wrist when you snap that thing. All right, very good. Now, bring this line on back. Come on back further. Now we're going to add segment two or step two to this. What we're going to do from this position now, we were right here isolating the wrist and flipping as hard as we could to get that feel of that finish when the ball snaps out of our hands. Now we're in this position, we're going to let go of the wrist and we're going to take our wrist now and put our elbow at least eye high with the ball back in our hand. We're going to reach back as far as we can with the ball. And from this position, we're going to flip the same way, follow through and touch our left knee. Receive the ball on the other end, do the same thing. Bring your elbow up. Now remember, the elbow has to be eye high. Cannot be be below the shoulder height. Elbow eye high, bend that back as far as you can here, and flip, follow through, touch your left knee. Okay? Let's try it. There's no wrist involved here now of isolation. Elbow eye high and flip. Now don't take the ball any further back. Don't rotate your shoulders. Just leave it right here. Lean as far back as you can and flip. All the way back and flip and touch our left knee. There we go. Reach back, flip and touch our left knee. Good follow through. Back, eye high, flip and touch our left knee. Elbow eye high, back, flip, and touch our left knee. Some of you guys are starting to fire it so hard now that your, your partner can't catch the ball. Okay, Feel that wrist flip now, the thing we worked on first. Feel that wrist really snap the ball when it comes through. Excellent. Good follow through. Elbow eye high, back, flip, follow through, touch the left knee. Excellent. There you go. Don't take it any further back. Leave it right there. Do not rotate your shoulders yet. Straight back, flip. There you go. Eye high and flip. Sweet. All right, that is segment two. You kind of get the feel now where this arm actually is bent. See where my arm is actually bent here, almost looks like if I were to show you this on videotape, it would look like your arm was going to snap off. But this takes the pressure off the elbow and the shoulder unless my elbow is below shoulder height. Then it adds pressure to my shoulder and my elbow like a couple of you have had. All right, now, progression three. We're going to take the same position with our arm, except now we're going to turn to the side this way, facing this direction. As we would close our front shoulder to throw to our target, we put our front shoulder to our target. Now we're going to take our ball and put it back out against the wall here. The ball should be facing against me, and I should be looking right now at my elbow. The elbow is eye high, and it's going to be this kind of a motion. Our front foot's pointed at our target. The back foot's pointed the same way mine is here to the side. Elbow is eye high. All I'm going to do now is add one more step, which is this one, to the previous two. I'm going from here to here, and this is going to be the trick. When you bend, the elbow needs to stay there. Here to here. Back to the wall, eye high, flip out front, follow through and touch our knee. Back to the wall, eye high, flip out front with our wrist and touch our knee. Let's try that. Okay. Back to the wall, good extension with our arm. Eye high with the elbow, flip out front, touch our knee. All right, let's try her. Go ahead on your own. You'll feel that turn, flip. These are all the segments. Try not to make it herky-jerky. Try to do all of them smoothly together if you can. Here, here. Back to the wall, elbow eye high, flip out front, follow through and touch the knee. Back to the wall, there we go, excellent, very nice, touch your left knee. Elbow eye high and back to the wall, twist and throw. Do you feel that little twisting action in there? And especially for you before, here's where you were before, you were right here. Your hand was right here when you came back, so really the only strength you have is what you can push out of this position. 
Now, when you get your elbow eye high here, as you start to throw that thing around that corner, this is what causes the whipping motion in your throwing motion. Hold it right there. It's from here. As I step forward to throw, look at this whipping motion. See, that's where the power comes from. Just like in our swing where the power comes from our hips, when we spin, this is where the power and the strength come from in our throwing motion right here. Now as you go to throw the ball, let that elbow turn, eye high, release and touch your left knee. Okay? All right, touch the left knee. Okay, all right, you'll get it. Just takes time. Then all these segments will equal a good throwing motion if you'll do them correctly. Okay, here we are. Eye high, flip, follow through, touch. See, the first thing you want to do is what? Right there. And this is where most kids are here. A lot of kids are right here, and you're not utilizing your arm strength. This is what causes it here. Then as you step forward, this thing starts to bend, and there's where the whipping action comes from. Elbow is eye high. Release with that wrist action we showed you out front. Follow through and touch the left knee. All right, let's go. Back to the wall, elbow eye high, flip, follow through. Excellent. Okay, back to the wall, elbow eye high, flip, follow through. Okay, very good. You can feel that when you turn, can't you? I can tell you feel this. You feel where that whipping comes in. You have a pretty good idea of this. Excellent. That's it. There you go. Much better. All right, segment four. Segment four. This can be used for an infielder or an outfielder or whatever, but we're going to hold our hands like this in this position with our front foot and our front shoulder pointed at our target just like we were. But now we're in the set position. We're going to break and our front arm is going to point at our target and our back arm is going to the wall just like we do when we pitch. We're going here to here. So as we step, we're going to point right where our target's going to go. Right here, 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 and touch the knee. We're going to break as if we catch the ball, we're going to break Take our arm back to the wall, up to the L, follow through, release out front. All right, let's try that. Hold the ball in the center, just as if you caught the ball and brought it to the center of your body to make a throw or an exchange, okay? Ready, break, throw, okay? Now when you break, I want you to take one quick look back at your elbow. We're here, break. There it is, eye high. If it's down here, get it up, eye high, and throw. Follow through, touch the knee. Break, throw, okay? Break, close the front shoulder, throw, good. Break, throw, very nice. Break, throw. All right, break, throw, okay, break, throw, sweet, that is very nice, very nice, great mechanics.